Um, so I want to introduce our next speaker, Henry Ann. Uh, Henry is a graduate of Newcastle University Business School, and he has over seven years of experience working in the B2B software industry. While he was at school, he ran a startup company and learned how to program in a coding club. Impressive. <laughs> Henry you. works for Adenin Technologies, which creates intra intranet applications for businesses and is based right here in Boston. He's part of an innovation lab responsible for making big leaps <coughs> towards software for the digital workplace, moving away from monolithic architectures at the heart of most intranets today. This push has enabled Adenin to develop an award-winning app called Now Assistant, the world's first AI assistant for the workplace. Henry, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So um, hello, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for joining me to um, my presentation, Making Internet Smart, how AI and bots allowed us to create a smart assistant for the digital workplace. I know lunch is in sight, so let's get right into it. Uh, first of all, we live in a digital workplace age. Everything now is happening faster. The amount of data in the world doubles every 18 months. There is roughly 2 million people with smartphones worldwide. And companies need to figure out a way to leverage all of this in a way that helps them be more productive and stay competitive. But we're also entering a new era, speaking in very broad terms. In the 90s, we had the revolution of the PC, followed by the internet, the advent of online shopping, social networks, the Web 2.0, until in around 2010, the iPhone, iPad, and the iTunes App Store uh, started to emerge as the dominating standard in consumer technology. And uh, that leads us to today, where we see that same tech moving into the office in order to help us make work easier, better, and smarter, i.e. the digital workplace. Now, uh, there's a lot of inside baseball about what really constitutes a digital workplace, which we're not going to get into. Uh, but just to recap quickly how Gartner defines a digital workplace, it's a new and more effective way of working by exploiting consumer uh, trends, technologies, and apps. Sometimes it's also called the consumerization of the workplace, therefore. And the goal is to raise employee engagement. Now, there is also a graphic um, of the top 10 technologies Gartner has in mind. And I'd, I would just like to draw your attention to, it says, ambient knowledge, silo busters and virtual personal assistants, as these will be important to us a little later on. Now, the transition towards a digital workplace is called the digital transformation, and it is the hot topic everybody's talking about. Yet, only one in three companies actually have a plan for their digital transformation. In other words, if your company doesn't have a policy yet, then you're in good company. From those organizations that do have a plan, however, their executives think that at best, their organization is about a quarter of the way towards realizing their end state vision of a digital workplace. And in another survey, 77% of executives have said that they're missing digital skills to the extent that it impedes the digital transformation of their organization. Unfortunately, business applications are often quite complicated to use with nearly two and three reporting that they need the help of another person or a team to access data. 55% say they have to fight the technology that is meant to help them, they're having to manually retrieve the data they need, and 43% say they even have to pull data from many different systems to get one complete view of their customer, their product, or their inventory. And multiple apps are, in fact, a key problem for businesses. 75% of employees are struggling to log into multiple business applications for benign things like forgotten usernames, confusion which application holds what data, and so on. And one in four people have to circumvent policies or dig through large reports to get the data they need, further indicating that their apps might not be working so well. In fact, uh, a whooping 38% are saying their biggest pain with their enterprise applications is that they're literally unable to access its data inside, never mind outside the office. The alarm bells should be deafening at this point. Um, to put that into perspective, another study has found that 61% of knowledge workers need to access four or more systems on a daily basis. 
and one in ten of us actually accesses 11 or more systems daily. That's a lot of systems. And looking through them all takes a lot of time. 36% of your time on average, to be precise. Imagine we had a way to just shave off 1% of that 36%, and that saving could quickly amount to hundreds of dollars per employee per month. In fact, one multinational company with 70,000 internal users was cited in that study, and they were saving just over $50 million a year just by securely unifying their access to their internet, content management, ERP, and customer support for all of their users. So we can say that the potential to get digital transformation right is huge, and it's an increasingly critical aspect to your business success. And like with every business critical opportunity, there will be winners and losers. Take this fact, for example. In the last 15 years, just over half of all Fortune 500 companies have disappeared. That's an insanely short half-life for such big businesses. In fact, the average Fortune 500 life expectancy was 75 years in 1975, but it has dropped to just 15 years today. So what signs do we see that the market is shaping to follow the digital transformation? Well, here are just uh, three headlines I would like to share with you. Uh, American Airlines has replaced the a 40 pound flight bag with an electronic iPad version, which saves weight, which saves fuel, which saves money. Um, IBM and Cisco, an un unlikely duo 10 years ago, are now partnering to bring bots into the workplace. And uh, Box and Google are also partnering to expand their, you know, kind of get their share of the digital workplace market. Um, now, these three headlines, what do they have in common? What's the common ground between them? Well, it's that they have recognized an important change in employee demand, and they are working towards a new reality. And that new reality is that employees now expect a digital working experience. They want enterprise apps to be mobile first. They want them to be relevant, showing only the info I, as an individual, will find important and valuable. They want things the way their iPhone works, easy, intuitive, well-designed, fun maybe. They want uh, updates and changes to happen in real time and be informed about things as they happen. And they want technology to help further blur the lines between physical meeting rooms and virtual collaboration, which is maybe why Slack is so popular. But the struggle to get there is real. So far, two in three employees hate using their enterprise apps because they're just such a poor experience. No wonder, since two in three large enterprises have no current plans to invest in their own apps. Why aren't companies investing, you may ask? Because most of them don't even have a clear understanding of their digital touch points or what digital even means to them. What nearly two-thirds of executives uh, do know, however, is that their organization needs to pick up the pace when it comes to digital transformation, which at least is a start. Now, uh, how do our internets fare in the light of the digital workplace? Well, not that well, actually. In fact, your internet might actually suck. Yes, I didn't say that. Um, most companies haven't upgraded their internet in the past five years. So if uh, you're still on SharePoint 2010, then you're in good company. Since most internets were built before the iPhone was even a thing, the experience on mobile leaves something to be desired. In fact, most internets are strictly desktop only and VPN only. Internets also don't incorporate much outside data, like your Dropbox or email attachments. They're literally just a silo for your policies, corporate news, legal things, you know, boring stuff. And depending on your perspective, this could be a problem. Some people say that the internet is like a beautiful city library, like the one just opposite this hotel. They're beautiful, expensive places of vetted information, but these days, folks just resort to Google instead. Which, I went over there yesterday, and it was nowhere near as full as this photo suggests, uh, so that may be a fate shared by most intranets. So overall, there's very little digital workplace mantra going on in contemporary intranets. Now, I wouldn't tell you so much bad news without talking about the silver lining. There are ways that can help bring your organization or bring the internet of your organization into the future today. 
So how do you make an internet smart? Well, we identified three key aspects um, that help companies innovate. And the first are new ways to search. The second is card-based user interfaces. And the third are uh, chatbots for conversations between human and data. First up, search. Current internet search is not so smart if we think about it. Let me explain. When you ask a, a contemporary internet, let's say SharePoint, a really simple question, how many days of annual leave do I have left? Then the answer you get is zero results, which may be unsurprising, but it's still frustrating. So um, search while obviously making an appearance in almost every software you use is attested to be seldom executed well, and even when it is, it's still too expensive and complex. CMSYR cites an example where the marketing department was expected to search through a whopping 12 different systems before they could get their daily up-to-date um, critical information. And I think no one in their right mind would use Google, Yahoo, Bing, let alone nine more, nine more search engines just to look up a simple fact. So I think it's fair to say that internets are overdue for an update. And there are new ways to understand your users. These are, of course, heavily borrowed from Google, but that's not by accident. In fact, that brings us into the realms of artificial intelligence, um, which Google not only has a domain in, but actively encourages developers to integrate with their services, like voice recognition, for example, which uh, Google or Amazon are two popular providers of APIs that allow any developer to offer voice recognition inside their own apps. Or NLP, uh, natural language processing, which is a way of making natural sounding search queries. Uh, for example, on a Mac, but Windows has that, Google does that. I could ask for emails I received last week from Martin. And then the AI in the background deciphers which part of my request refers to the sender, the recipient, the time frame, and so on. And that's tremendously interesting once companies start and provide answers to their users' questions. Which brings us to the format in which such answers could be delivered to users, and that's cards. So let's imagine for a second I'm asking my supposedly now smart internet the same question, but only this time I get a card. Hmm, that's an interesting concept. We have an instant definitive answer. We also have rich media like a teaser image, visualized data, a bar chart or a line chart. And of course, relevant related info. If I have a question, if I have a problem, who could I speak to, who could I call that could help me solve it? What are the policies that I need to read up on? And lastly, of course, meaningful actions. So I can start a new leave request straight from this card, which is neat. And the card actually shows information from across multiple sources. Like one section is coming from your HR software, the next from Active Directory and so on. Uh, the more the merrier. And there are two types of cards. I have a, basically a proactive card, which the assistant offers to me in case I wanted it. And we also have a reactive card if I'm required to start or decide something. And these reactions, again, could come from very different systems, which may or may not handle workflows in their very own unique way. But cards, again, unify this experience because of their consistency. Lastly, let's look at bots. So you will have already heard about them. They're quite the buzzword recently, but what actually are bots? They're essentially a new form of user interface. Instead of every application you know, relying on their own little buttons and menus, bots share the same interface and that's a message. Now some of you might say, oh, that's kind of like Linux or like a command line from the 80s. And that's true. But there's also a key difference, and that is that bots try to mimic the interaction with you to be similar to how a human would interact with you. And there are different kinds of bots for things like um, e-commerce, flight reservation, pizza delivery, you know. Uh, that doesn't mean they all have their own app. Uh, they're integrated into one and the same messaging app, uh, effectively making messaging apps the new platform for bots. TechCrunch already uh, last year predicted that bots will replace apps and bot stores will be the new app stores. And the founder of um, Evernote has said that bots are the most exciting thing he's seen in tech since the iPhone. 
And uh, last year, all of this could have been fortune telling, but since this year, both Microsoft and Facebook have introduced their own bot development frameworks. It's um, you know, a given that they are here to stay. But how could bots function in a business environment? Well, similar to, app to apps, bots will have a very narrow skill set, so they can do just one or two things, but those relatively straightforward. So um, in your company, you might have many different bots. And um, if we just stick with our leave request example, then the bot would have to capture three different things from the user, the duration of the leave request, the reason, and how much leave they're entitled to take. Now, the first, the duration, the bot would capture in an informal chat with the user. The second, the reason, be it jury duty or um, annual leave or parental leave, um, also again in a chat interface. But the remaining leave, for example, the bot could actually look up straight for, from a payroll software. So, uh, you know, they're just short and sweet. That's sort of the idea behind them. Now, using these three innovations actually has manifested itself in uh, what we call the Now Assistant. So this is an awarded app uh, by us, by Adenin, which is um, the world's first AI assistant for the workplace. And now we'll see how this app makes an internet smarter. So uh, this is how it looks. Uh, it shows you, proactively notifies you about updates in any of your data. It does so through what we call Now Cards. So they follow their own kind of logic and architecture. And the stream that you see is always personal and up to date, which means if you have an unassigned workflow or a ticket, but someone else takes over that workflow, then the card would be redundant to you, so automatically disappears again. And um, of course, like I said before, now system uses AI and bots. So the question is how? Uh, first up, AI, for example, the AI part uses voice recognition, where here you can say something to your assistant and then it understands that. But once we've understood it, we also try and decipher what the actual intent was by using another form of AI, and basically that makes a best bet at what the user might have wanted from the assistant and then fulfills that request, for example, by serving here a card or starting a workflow. At there's a diagram of what's happening as well. So first up, we have the voice recognition, which leads into the recognition of the intent. And of course, uh, this is a skill we need to continuously teach and practice with the AI. And uh, all of this is what we would call artificial intelligence. But uh, carrying on, once we've determined an, um, what the user has said, we will be sending the request for fulfillment to the assistant for example, to start a search or a workflow or answer a question. So this is how this would look, for example. Uh, here I have its api.ai. For the leave request, I can give the AI a couple of specimen voice prompts that we would expect users to use. And then we define the action, which in this case is to serve the PTO, the pay time off card. Um, and then I could also, there is a training section uh, train the AI to better understand the sentences that maybe it didn't get quite right. But we also uh, use the assistant inside bots. So instead of giving output as cards, we could give the output as a text block in Slack or Skype for Business. Uh, so here I'm asking for the same question and I get the same answer, just in a slightly different format which is handy because you can use this for commands or search wherever you are, be it on your phone or your desktop. Um, but uh, now system also embeds into existing intranets. So take SharePoint for instance, where you get like a little uh, now button which sort of slides open your assistant, or we have a Chrome extension which um, you know, uh, shows you your cards, you can start a voice uh, a search request, you can swipe your cards, it works really well, and it feels like entirely like an entirely smarter way to use an internet. Um, so in conclusion, the aim of the AI is to surface relevant data from across multiple sources, thus making better use of the tons and tons of data you will already have, and therefore smart assistants or a faster and better way to get to just what you need when you need to know it uh, without much disruption 
because there isn't any migration necessary, there are zero transaction costs, because it just merely supplements and, and not replaces existing software. So thank you very much everyone for your attention. I hope you have a pleasant conference and a nice lunch. Does anybody have any questions? Sure. I think I get the bot, right? It's mm -hmm. a voice or text interface to some very smart AI.